Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> Tonight is going to be a very, very special night for all of you. You're going to have a very unexpected surprise. We are going to be not only channeling with Blessed Mother Mary, but she has also brought St. Joseph along, the Father of Jesus, and he will give us a message and answer some questions for us as well. So, it's good as I say, this is going to be a wonderful evening for all of us. We've been talking with both of them before we went live, and we are very excited to have the pair of them with us tonight. So, without any further delays, I think we should get started and let Connie ask the first question of the Blessed Mother Mary for us. Mother Mary, would you like to begin with a message? Yes. I, I want everybody to know just how wonderful it is to be able to speak to those of you that are listening. I want you to know that I bless each and every one of you and I hear your prayers. I know that many of you pray to me and I want you to know that I hear your prayers. I know that many of you are very troubled by all the evil that is going on around you at this time. That evil is the reason that we sent Barry and Connie back to bring you our messages. And it is why we are coming through to speak with you. Rest assured that my son is well aware of what is taking place in your world. Also rest assured that he will attempt to influence and help those of you that have his love in your hearts. He will watch over you and he will bless you as well. So with that simple message of love for all of you, we are prepared to answer your questions tonight. Okay. Will you tell us about your parents and your childhood? My parents were Jewish and I had a wonderful childhood. They were very, very loving parents. They supported me and they did the best they could to raise me and to give me a good start. These were not simple times to raise children because there was so much violence going on around us. I had a sister and I had a brother and they were both very loving people as well. But all in all, I had a very, very wonderful childhood. What would you tell us about the family of Jesus? What Barry has written in his book about the family of Jesus is exactly the words that we have given him to tell us to tell the story. It was very important that the secret of his family was kept from the world. We all feared that if the secret of his wife and children ever got out to the Romans, that they would attempt to kill them as well. My son had five beautiful children and an absolutely wonderful life, wife. Her name was Toba and she could not have been a better wife to my son. We were very proud of all of his children and they grew up to live honorable lives. Okay. Will you tell us about your husband, Joseph? I love my husband, Joseph, with all of my heart. He was a wonderful person. And when our son was born, 
He was a magnificent father. He protected him when we found out that King Herod wanted to have him killed. Joseph was the one that led us to Egypt where we fled for our safety. Joseph is here with us tonight. I know that you requested that he com comes and he has joined us. Joseph is now going to give you a simple message as well. Thank you. Thank you for asking me to speak to you tonight. I know that of all the channeling and information that has been given to Barry, I have stayed in the background. I was the father of the most magnificent son that ever walked the earth. Jesus was an absolute wonder to behold. Mary and I loved him with all our hearts and all our souls. And we did everything that we could to protect him. We knew from an early time that he was special. The angels would come to us and speak of him. And they would tell us that he was going to be very, very special and that he would absolutely change the world. We, Mary and I were very simple people and we had trouble believing what we were told. When he left us to travel as a teenager, we feared for his safety, but the angels told us that we had nothing to fear. I want you to know that my son was an incredible husband and father to his children. When he married, we attended the wedding and we watched as Toba gave us wonderful grandchildren. I know that there has not been much written about me. I tried to stay in the background. I have served God through many, many lifetimes. And I was so lucky that my soul was chosen to return to Father Jesus. I will be happy to answer a few questions for you. Okay, what is your opinion of what's taking place in today's world? We are saddened by many things that are taking place today. We are watching as evil is growing in your government. We are very, very saddened by the fact that many of your governments are allowing the taking of the lives of the innocents. Abortion is a terrible thing and we watch it taking place from this side. We know that humans are approaching a time where their evolution can be threatened. You have developed weapons of mass destruction capable of wiping out all life on earth. We hope that you will learn to love one another and to forget this concept of mutual destruction. It is a time, as I said before, where humans will have to make decisions that will affect your future evolution. God has given humans free will 
and they are using it often contrary to the teachings of my son. We hope that humans will listen to the words that we are being, that we are speaking and will heed the advice. Yes. How old were you when Jesus was, Jesus was crucified? When Jesus was crucified, I was 55 years old. It was an absolutely terrible time. How old were you when you passed? I passed at the age of 73. Were you a descendant of King David? No, I don't think that I really am a descendant of King David. I know that it is written in the Gospels as such, but I am not aware of any such lineage. Will you tell us about your relationship with Jesus' family? I love the family of Jesus just as I love my own children. After they killed my son, Mary and I assisted in raising his family. We tried to move them further away from, from the town of, from the towns that were heavily populated by the Romans. We knew that we had to keep their existence a secret. I had a wonderful time helping to raise the children. Unfortunately, I was forced to try to replace their father. But all of the boys and Sarah grew up to be good people and raised families of their own. Uh, what is your opinion of what's taking place with the immigration problem on our border? I'm going to let Mary come back and answer the rest of these questions, as I think the answers will have much more importance coming from her. So with that, I'm going to say good night and thank you for letting me speak with you. Thank you. Okay, so Mary, what is your opinion of what's taking place with the immigration problems at our border? I feel great pity for all of the people that are trying to enter your country. The United States is the finest and most tolerant country in the world. And for that reason, Many want to try to come here to live. Unfortunately, your country has limited resources and cannot support all of the people in the world. There are also evil people attempting to cross your border. I believe that Every country has a responsibility to protect its borders in order to protect the citizens of its country. I feel that it is important that your country continues to allow immigrants to enter it on a fairly large scale. But too many will create hardships, especially on the poor living in your country. It is a very, very difficult situation because as I said, we do feel great pity for them. What can we do to bring more peace to the world? I wish there was a simple answer to that. We try to guide those that will listen 
to have love in their hearts for others. Just as my son spoke when he walked the earth, we know that having love in your heart and showing it to others is the only way that you will assure your evolution. There is so much hatred in the world today that breaks our heart. We watch what is going on in the Middle East. There has been so many, so much hatred there for so long, it will be very, very difficult to ever solve. Hopefully, the individuals will at least learn to get along with each other. There's much that has to be done to try to bring the hearts of people that have so much hatred in them to hearts that will show love for all. It is a very difficult time. And as I have said before, that is why we have chosen now to send you and Connie back and to attempt to bring our words of love and peace to as many individuals as possible. Is there anything else that we could do to reduce the anger and the violence? Speak the words of love. Tell others that they must try to remove all hatred from their hearts. I know that is a very difficult thing to do. But if you have no hatred in your heart, you will not show hatred towards others. Focus on living a good life so that you can join us in the realms of heaven. Avoid doing things that you know are wrong. Avoid doing things that harm others. As we have told you many times, sins are mostly forgivable. Only those where you hurt others are truly held against you. The only way that you can cure what is going on in your world is to have individuals drive the hatred from their hearts and bring out the love that replaces that hatred. You've told us that you watch over and bless the members of our group. What can they do to better pass on the words of love taught by your son? I know that many members of the group are feeling very frustrated because the book that Barry has written has not caught on as they have hoped. They also know that they're being frustrated when they try to talk to individuals about our messages and the miracle that you watch when you receive these messages. You must persevere. Do not waste your time with those that are violently opposed to the message. There are many individuals out there that are suffering, that are uncertain in how their belief structure is working. They feel rejected and they feel that no one, especially God, loves them. You must let them know that God loves and hears everyone. Encourage him to speak to God through prayer. He will try to answer those prayers that he can, but he will attempt to guide people towards the understanding of his teachings and his true love. What would your advice be on raising children in this modern world? The first thing that I would advise is that a child needs a mother and a father. 
we watch over here and see that many families are, are being raised by a single mother or a single father. Work on your relationships with your loved ones. Do not give up on marriage at the first time you have major disagreements. Work out your problems. Work on loving each other and work on caring for each other. It will not be until the thought of God is restored to the family unit and men and women remain together to raise the children. It is also important that the children are taught that God loves each and every one of them. Children need to know the difference between right and wrong. They must be discouraged from, they must be discouraged from hanging out with individuals that will lead them astray. They need to devote themselves to understanding God's love. The church can play a large role in raising children, but you must be aware of what the church is teaching the children because there are certain institutions that are not fulfilling God's will. It is a very difficult time to raise your family, but as technology increases, the family unit must adapt to the technological changes that will affect all of you. What's the best way to teach a child to respect themselves and others? A child must be taught to love himself. The child must understand that the physical appearance means nothing. It is the soul within the child. The child must know that God loves him and will help guide him. We watch over the small children and we try to let them know that they are loved, but most importantly, they must love themselves. They, shouldn't, they cannot be allowed to become filled with the hatred that many individuals are showing today. Let them know that if there is a world out there where they will be respected and held in high esteem. What's the best way to help the younger generation in this modern world? The best way to help the younger generation is to try to act as an influence of good in their lives. If they see you fighting with your wife, they will feel that it is fine to fight among others. If they see you strike another, they will think it is fine to, for them to strike others as well. If you speak against God, they will feel that it is also fine to speak against God. You must set an example and the young will follow those examples. How can holy energies be felt and how do you recognize them? The first step in understanding holy energies is to believe in them. Many feel that there is no such thing as a holy spirit or a holy energy. Open your heart as you pray to God or to me. When you pray to me, I will try to let you feel a peace that will settle over you. That feeling of peace is a holy energy. As you become more adept 
at opening your heart to the love of my son and myself, you will find that you will feel this, this energy that will take over your lives. You will be at peace and you will know that all is well. We see evil all around us. What is the best way to keep from being depressed and letting the evil bring us down? I would suggest to you that the easiest way is to be with people that have already accepted the love of God in their hearts. Be with people that, that are positive. Stay away from those that speak negatively of others. Much of what you watch on your modern instruments of communication, such as television and your phones, bring you examples of evil and of hatred. Do not allow yourself to be bullied. Know that you are special and that you are special in the eyes of God and myself. The Catholic Church holds you in the highest of reverence. What is your opinion of the current state of the Catholic Church? At the present time, we are very, very saddened by what is taking place in the Catholic Church. Much abuse has taken place in past years. That abuse has ruined the lives of the young members of the church and has turned many away from the church. Hopefully the, church, the Catholic Church is now taking steps to punish those that perform those evil acts and attempting to bring people back to the Catholic way of life. However, it is important to understand that the Catholic Church must also adapt to modern mores and ways of thought. Children today resent the strict Catholic doctrines of the past. What they must do is preach a more simple and accurate teaching of the words of my son. What, what would your message be to the current Pope? I would tell the Pope that much of what he is speaking is not the words that we would choose for him to speak. He must teach a very simple doctrine of love. Often he interjects much that should not be spoken as the true words of our God. God's words are very simple, as we have told you many times. It need not be complicated. The church must also stop attempting to totally control the lives of its members. The devotion of the individual should be to God and not to the church. Yeah. What would you tell us about the Catholic Church's teachings on divorce? We 
understand the need for husbands and wives to stay together in order to provide a healthy structure for the raising of children. However, there are times that one member of a marriage does not fulfill the obligation of showing love and understanding. In many cases, there is brutality and evil in the hearts of a member of a marriage. In the instances where only negative influences are being shown by one partner in a marriage, it is acceptable for those individuals to cease to be married. It is more important for an individual to attempt to lead a full life and not be influenced by evil or brutality. That evil and brutality sets a terrible example for the children in the family and it is far better to remove the children from that influence. Yeah. Okay, many politicians are pushing for unregulated abortions. What would your message to them be? Those that are pushing for unregulated abortions will face, will face the wrath of God when they return. One thing that upsets all of us on this side, as we have told you many, many times, is the taking of lives of the innocents that have no control over what is taking place. We have also told you that it is possible for a woman that has had an abortion to understand how wrong it was and to find the love of God in her heart understanding what she has done and she will find that she will not be judged harshly when she comes home. But those that continue to kill the young and take the lives will find that their place in the realms of heaven will not be as enjoyable as they hope. What is your opinion about the current moral status of the United States? There is much going on in the United States at this time. There are many that are trying to destroy religion and the love of God. There are many that are saying God does not exist. It is very important that individuals take firm stands and pursue what we are telling you in these messages. It is a very difficult time for your country. There is very much evil in your government. You must remove those evil individuals and instill the principles of your founding fathers. Remember that God influenced those founding fathers and allowed the country to be formed closest to his principles. As you wander from those principles, so you will wander from the, wander from the will of God. Are you planning to perform a miracle to show the power of God? There will be things taking place in the future that will show all the power of God. It is, it will happen in the near future and it will show that God is the ultimate power.
Okay. When a child dies young, is it karma for the parents, or the child, or both? It is generally a karma for the parent, but it can also be for the child as well. Perhaps the parents in their life plan need to understand true grief and what it feels like. It is also possible that the child needs to learn the lesson of a short lifespan and not being able to fulfill what he sees the other children doing. It is a difficult question to answer, but quite often it is the karma for both, for all souls involved. What is the goal of the new world order? As we watch from over here, we see that there are very powerful individuals that want to control all that takes place in your world. They feel that undermining democratic governments and causing dissension among individuals is the way to accomplish this. You must be aware of these very, very powerful individuals and what they are trying to do. Know that your country, the United States, is the only country that comes very close to fulfilling the teachings of God. The more you go away from those teachings and give up, and the more you give up your individual liberties, the easier it will be for globalist or new world order individuals to take over. You must preserve the rights of individuals. Okay. Will you and your son take action to defeat the new world order? We gave humans free will and we would hope that humans can defeat that type of evil on their own. We will try to, to influence others and to help. But if individuals decide to give up their individual rights and conform to a single world government, they will do that at their own distress. Yeah. What do you believe is the most important thing that humans have to overcome for successful future evolution? they have to overcome hatred. Hatred is evil. Hatred in the heart of an individual leads that individual to show hatred towards others. If the individual has love in his heart, he will show love towards others. You must stand back and you must focus on removing hatred from your hearts. Once you do that, you will find a peace that only those that have accomplished that feat know. Do you have any messages for group members? Yes. Maintain your faith in what you are hearing, in the words that you are hearing. There will be a time that it is easier for you to pass on these words. Many of you have been sent back specifically to help carry out the words that you are hearing from Barry and Connie. Know that what you are hearing is the truth and the way. Those words will lead to something very special. Have patience and focus on learning those words. In order for you to be effective, you have to understand the message. We will complete within the next couple of years, the complete messages that we want you to understand. Start now to understand them. Listen to the recordings, 
that Barry has provided for you. Understand and pray for guidance, and all will be well. Can you tell us what impact the members of our group will have in the future? There are members of the group that will have a very, very large impact in the future. It will be those individuals that have patience and take time to understand. We want you to also learn to communicate with us. Do not fear the channeling board that Barry has shown you. It is an excellent way to learn to communicate with those of us on this side. We will guide you and protect you. There are those among you that know that you have been chosen to communicate with us. We ask that you please follow through and work with Barry and Connie so that when their mission on earth is finished, you will be able to carry on the work. Okay. Now we'll see how well I remember this word. <laughs> Are you appearing at Medjugorje, Georgia? No, I am not appearing there. I appeared at, at Fatima, but Medjugorje is not a place that I have chosen to show my appearance. Is that whole thing a hoax? Unfortunately, it is not based in truth. Okay. Many evangel evangelical Christians tell us that we're speaking to demons. What would you tell them? There are many that are very close-minded to your message. There are many that feel that they are that they are doing God's work and that by stifling any other message in opposition to what they read in the Gospels is a sin. You are best to walk away from those people. Unfortunately, there are many of those people that will detract from your message and will try to influence others from listening to you. The best you can do is present facts to them. But sadly, there are many that you will not be able to convince. Yes. Do you have a final message for our listeners? Yes. Tonight, once again, I have come forward to talk to you. Tonight, I brought my husband along and he remains as a guide for you as well. We listen to your prayers and we try to understand what we can do to best guide you. Know that when you pray to me, I hear every word as well as when you pray to my son, he hears every word. We will try to bring you love and guidance. Be aware that there will be those that try to lead you away from us. The words that you are hearing are words of love and they are words that God wants you to hear. This is not an easy path for any of you. With our guidance, you will succeed in bringing others to love our God. Without that love of God in your hearts, your evolution will eventually fail. Know this, know that I bless each and every one of you here tonight. Know that God is with you, know that he hears you, and know that he will bring you comfort. Know as well 
that when you end your life on earth, you will enter heaven and you will be rewarded for all of the wonderful things that you have done with your life. With that, I am going to say good night, God bless, and keep God in your hearts. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. I hope all of you have enjoyed this tonight. I think it was, uh, the messages were very moving, and very deep. I look forward to being able to read the transcripts because much of what, when I do this, I don't, I don't remember what I say. So with that, we're going to say good night. God bless and keep you. And please, when you go to my YouTube channel, please subscribe to it. And please read God's words that he has given you in my book, Channeling the Life of Jesus. And with that, we're going to say good night and God bless. Good night all.